Hey, good morning. Welcome to the CGS Biblecast. So glad you joined us today. I am feeling like summer. I got the kids here. They are out of school. It's feeling more and more and more like summer. And I got my summer gear on. I got this new shirt. Ooh, it's kind of see-through. That's kind of cool. But this is, Kara calls it a booger. This is Huffy. He's a treasured uh, character mascot from the early 90s and late 80s from uh, Tulsa Sports. So uh, it's feeling like summer around here. In fact, I feel like I should be at the lake. And so let's just go ahead and make that happen. There we go. It just feels better now. Am I right? Let's make this the new background. This is actually a picture of my favorite spot in the world. It's a lake house where we, we grew up going to the lake all the time. So I fell in love with the lake. So there we go. It feels like summer. It's, it's good, right? Going to the lake next week was there last week. I am feeling like it's lake time. So I'm going to be cranking out a bunch of these today, getting ahead so you all have some some content next week. So I hope you all have a, have, have a good summer and you guys get to go somewhere as well and, and do something you want to do. And so I thought since we're at the lake here, we ought to go ahead and tell a boat story, right? So there's this man who found himself in a sinking boat. I have never, well, I take that back. I have been in a sinking boat. Forget to leave the plug in. Let's just change that to the story. There's a man who found himself in a boat without the plug-in, and he had no plug to put in. So he cried out to God for help. A boat came by, uh, but he waved the boat away, saying that, Don't worry, I prayed about it. The Lord's going to save me. Helicopter then arrived. A man stubbornly pushed him away uh, from the rope. He said, I don't need that rope. The Lord is going to save me. I'm going to be saved by the rope. Unfortunately, the man drowned because he didn't recognize the help that God sent. He's been sending help time and time again, sending people and, and uh, helicopters and all sorts of rescue missions to come his way, but he did not want the help because the Lord was going to help. Well, I don't know what he thought was going to happen, but it's a silly story, right? It's a made-up story, I'm sure, and uh, I've heard a few different versions of it, but um, the truth is, sometimes we have to realize that we are the ones being stubborn. We're not the ones listening to God, and we're not preparing for the provision that's going to come our way. God could be telling us in a creative way how He's going to care for us, and we're like, no, that's not how it's going to be. I have my way that God's going to take care of me, and that's just the way it's going to be. But that's not how God works. He does things in different, strange ways, and we're going to read about that today in our scripture. Let's go here. Oh, that's the wrong one. Hey, this is the background. It's actually a blue screen. Did not mean to push that. There we go. Second Kings chapter four. I love Elisha. In fact, I we're, we're like trying to catch up here. We're a little behind, so I'm going to be flying through scriptures um, in the next this this summer. Really trying to get caught up. But uh, Elijah came first before Elisha, right? So you got to know about Elijah. He is this kind of a weird guy. He dressed strange, but he did all these incredible things. Like there was this competition with with the prophets of Baal where they had 450 of their prophets trying to cause a fire on the altar, and it, they couldn't do it. And Elijah, Elijah said, boom, Lord, make it happen. And the Lord sent lightning and fire to fall down from heaven, and it did. And he kind of mocks them. That was a really cool story. One time he runs faster than a chariot. And I just can't ever get the imagery out of my mind of that because it's just such a hilarious imagery from that. Uh, there's just so many story, great stories from Elijah. So read First Kings. Surely you are right now, and you've gone past that, and we're in Second Kings. But uh, he passes the mantle. There's this great story where Eli- Elisha uh, is is plowing the fields. Elijah puts his cloak on him, which means uh, it's basically the mantle is being passed. Uh, it's like, you're going to be my successor. And so Elijah burns the oxen. He he just takes his career. He sets it on fire. He says, I don't need this anymore. I'm going to be following, following this path now. And so there's no turning back. It's a great story. Then Elijah gets taken off to heaven. We don't know where he goes. He just disappears. And then Elisha begins his ministry right here. So sorry for the, the just super speed uh, fast forwarding through the scripture there, but uh, you need do need to know a little bit about Elijah if you're going to be talking about Elisha. Very similar names, am I right? That's kind of strange. But um, so we're in this really great story. Let's go back here. Uh, and Elisha, Elisha said, "There's this widow. She's running out of money. Uh, she's she's very poor. She's going to get her son 
taken from her and sold into slavery. So it's a really serious deal. And this is what happens when she takes her need to Elisha, man of God. He says, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask. Because she says, all I have is this flask of oil. She says, pour the flask into your jars, setting each one aside when it's filled. So she did what she was told. Her sons kept bringing her jars and she filled one after another. Soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't many more, she told her. He told her. Then the olive oil stopped flowing. So, really, really interesting story here about God's provision and him doing him coming through in a very strange way. Because she's like, hey, I need money. My son's gonna be taken from me. I gotta have cash. That's not what that's not what happens here. The Lord works in, in just really, really different ways. He he takes care of us in such different different ideas and plans than we have. And this is definitely one of the ways he does this. First he's he he wants the woman to humble herself. So she she's supposed to go to her neighbors and ask for jars. Uh it's just a very strange way to ask for help, but she's she's humbled, so she sends her boys out there to do that. And uh, then it's it's interesting, the provision comes in the in the amount that she prepares for the provision to come. So it's kind of like a faith test, like how much do you trust the Lord? Do you want him to just fill this jar and take care of this problem? Or you want him to really bless you? And so you're going to be kitting as many jars as you can because that's how confident you are. How humble are you? First, are you willing to go to the whole town because you know the provision's coming? Because you know God is going to come through. You're going to go to the whole town and, and look like a fool, say, I need this jar because God's going to fill it with oil. And they're like, okay, sure he is. But you have faith to do it. And, and that's how far your 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 provision is going to come through is based off of how far your faith uh, ahead of time is going to come. So perhaps God is offering a solution to your current need that you are failing to see. There's a rope coming down from a helicopter. There's people coming by in boats saying, I'm going to rescue you. There's people saying, fill the jars with oil. Make sure you get enough jars. But here's the thing. You have to be open to answer answers coming from unexpected places and obey His voice. The whole faith thing is kind of strange. It's, it's really awkward. Some, It's difficult, right? It's like, do I name this need and claim it as my own? It's that whole name it, claim it thing. It's, it's not really biblical. But there is something about faith and provision. When you have faith to carry out God's, God's plan, you got you to step, that, step up with obedience. Obedience is to me, is the key to faith. Faith isn't saying, uh, I want a million dollars and God's going to make it happen. I'm going to stand on that word. Well, that's, that word is fine, but it's your word. But to me, what faith is, is God telling you how he's going to provide and you carrying out that, that, uh, that, that, that plan with obedience. It requires you to be obedient. And so for me, yeah, God is going to tell you to do things and he's going to ask you to step out in faith. That faith is exercised with obedience. This woman does it with the jars. She's obedient. She goes and carries out this obedience with these jars. Whatever it is for you, God's telling you how he's going to provide. Follow through with obedience and let your faith be proven by by that obedience, by that works. And sit back and watch God do amazing things in your life. He's going to take care of your needs and he's going to provide. So whatever it is, be listening, be looking for those ropes to be dropping from the sky, be looking for those boats to come by, be looking for those jars to fill. And when God gives you an, a, a message, follow through with obedience and let, let him blow you away and let him, let, let him prove to you what your faith can do. Have a wonderful day, guys. Hope your faith carries you to amazing places today.